All right, devlog for February 2024. So last month I said I was gonna finish all the weapons. Well, I did it. I finished all the weapons except for texturing and some modeling, but all of the gameplay elements of the new weapons are in and all of the base models and animations are in. So that's really all I need to basically continue development. So I think I'll just get into it. So I'll first show the weapon I was unfinished I mean, mostly the uh, sticky launcher is now called the Combine. Uh, made some improvements for it. It has now animations, it has now sounds. And also the way uh, um, sticky bombs now stick to enemies has been improved. This has mostly been improved because of another weapon, the entire code that was... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I already knew that was gonna happen. I actually... <sighs> actually don't want the minus are there so i have to quickly change them out uh, so yeah the weapon stock logic actually didn't work as i thought it did that was because the way it works the way stuck projectiles work so when the projectile gets stuck in an enemy it only stuck the mesh to it but it didn't uh stuck the actual projectile actor to it that was because of an old piece of code that i once made for the arrows of the demon characters so yeah so yeah they're very inaccurate they have a massive blast radius so you really want to just set them up first you can't really use them against charging melee enemies like what you saw with the minotaur because then you just blow yourself up so yeah the other weapon i showcased last week was completely unfinished that was the the fire grenades which is now called the bushfire so a bunch of changes to the fire grenades so the first uh change i've made is that um, copying momentum so when you are doing a fast throw it doesn't copy momentum the reason why i want to do that is because uh, i discovered that it was really annoying if the fast throw uh, copies your momentum because then i would try and like throw something like let's throw something through that door and then the grenade would just fling there so the way it works is it only copies your momentum if you do a slow lob so if you do a lob then it does copy your momentum so if i walk backward and jump go fast I basically put it on the ground so you can do a lot of interesting stuff with that you can also like throw it around corners like this you can do a lot of cool stuff with that um the next gameplay element that i've included as aside from uh, copying your momentum is counting so you can cook the grenade so when you cook the grenade you have basically three seconds to throw it so yeah one two three so it actually detonates on four. I actually realized this during while well, I was making the animations for this is that when you count to three with your fingers, you actually only count to two because you do one, two, three. So you count at three, but you actually only count to two seconds because you started at one. So that's a really interesting uh, realization I had when making the animations. So that's why it's a bit awkward. Like, I mean, not a bit awkward. So it's like one, two, three, detonate. So it basically explodes on four, but it is three seconds because we start at one with counting. So yeah. Um, the last thing that you've probably already seen is that it actually spreads. So that's also something I talked about last month. The fire actually spreads out. So it has a certain amount of uh, cubes that expands. And it, basically the closer the area is, the more it basically can flow. So if I throw it in the open, it has a relatively small, between brackets, like area of effect. So these are all of the hitboxes that would hurt you. But if you were to throw it in like a thin area, like here, boom, then it, this happens. So the boxes expand out, but because the, it can't really expand out like wide, it just goes into the, uh, it just makes a lot of distance. So you basically can, in like thin, this is really good in thin hallways, so you can, just completely nullify an entire hallway. The fire effects are still work in progress. They're, I mostly just rely on the debug cubes to know where the fire is. The fire, the whole fire effect I still have to do, but it works in gameplay and that's all I need. So yeah, next weapon. Uh, just uh, probably the plasma weapon is next. So yeah, the plasma machine gun. This is going to... So I said in the, I've said a bunch of times, I think, that I want every weapon class to have a non-reloadable weapon. So this is basically the non-reloadable weapon of uh, 
of the plasma rounds. You don't ever have to reload it. It's just it just shoots, and it's probably the most easy and to understand uh, weapon. It's very similar to the Gatling gun for the for this, but it's a lot better. But which is the whole point? So the plasma weapons are kind of like direct upgrades to the small arms. So that's the plasma. So it has less recoil, better damage. It's just overall better than the crowd, which again, it's the point of plasma rifles is to be an upgrade over small arms. So yeah. It's secondary fire are just a bunch of fire rockets. And you can shoot them independently. So you can, while shooting, so yeah. It's DPS actually isn't that great, but that's kind of on purpose because if the dps is really good then it would just be better than the plasma shotgun and the pl plasma rifle so you basically trade in some dps in favor of just sustainable fire and never having to reload the fire rockets also don't do a lot of damage they're mostly meant for just doing a lot of damage over time effects um, all right so next weapon is probably yeah easily my it has become my favorite weapon it's the bow so the bow is the final energy weapon. It fires a stun arrow on primary fire and an explosive arrow on uh, non-primary on secondary fire. And it actually has an area of effect. So if you walk into the area of effect, you get a small stun, but enemies that are directly stuck with it. So you can actually stuck it to enemies. So if I now spawn the robot, I already spawned it. So I have to grab a new one. There we go. So if I just spawn an enemy. So any enemy that's in range will also get stunned. So I can showcase that. So yeah. Uh, you can't hold the bow. Right. So if it's it, it works on the charging logic. So I already have like charging weapon logic for the hunter shotgun. The double barrel. Um, I'm probably also going to make a new type of weapon logic that uh, handles being able to hold a charge. But I've not been able to do that and uh, I don't really use it honestly. Like generally when I want to fire an arrow, I want to fire it as fast as possible anyway. But I know a lot of people are going to expect uh, the ability to hold the bow. So personally, I would honestly not even bother. But I know since I know people want to hold the bow, I'll probably go in eventually and go some uh, new weapon firing logic to uh, be able to hold your arrows up to a certain amount of time it actually doesn't make sense to hold i mean it's a compound bow so maybe compound bows are fine whatever uh let's just showcase it against multiple enemies so yeah you can shoot it and it will just slow down in general all the enemies that's a headshot that's basically an insta kill So yeah, it has it has, doesn't have very high DPS, but what you get trade in for DPS, you basically get in uh, in area of effect. So, yeah. so let's also showcase the explosive. So the explosive arrows aren't very interesting. They're basically like they do the same amount of damage. Actually, they do a little bit more damage than grenades because they are a lot harder to hit. But yeah. The explosive arrows are really just a bonus. I mean, the explosive arrows are great if you have the rocket launcher. So, for example, if I grab the rocket launcher, it's kind of like synergized as well with the rocket launcher. So, so the rocket launcher always shoots free, uh, uses free rocket ammo to shoot free rockets at the same time. The problem with that is that it uses a lot of ammo and it's a lot of overkill. Like a lot of enemies don't need to, you don't need to use free rockets to kill an enemy so you can basically combine it with the bow so you can use the bow to use your explosive ammo more effectively so if you have a small enemy and you want to use an explosive uh, weapon to kill it in one go but uh, the rocket launcher is overkill you could just use the explosive arrow from the bow so this is kind of like two nice weapons to have uh, together um so next weapon what is next so I think the last weapon are the two nuclear weapons, so the final weapons. So let's talk about the second nuke weapon, that is the, the bolter, which I've called the kill chain. Any heavy metal fans will be happy to know what a reference, what type of reference that is. Uh, yeah. So like the, the IP I cannot talk about because the IP owners are dicks. 
it fires massive bolts and it just kills things very quickly. It basically does the same amount of damage as, a, as an explosive weapon, except it does it very fast. You can shoot this quite quickly. So the way exp uh, nuclear status effects work, by the way, I never explained this because the first time I uh, showed nuclear weapon, uh, the nuclear weapon, it was in one of those death vlogs where I didn't talk. So what it does is it, it applies a nuclear status effect and when an enemy with a nuclear status effect dies, they explode. So you can basically get a, uh, a chain of uh, explosions going. Wow, <laughs> that was a really good one. <laughs> I have a race. So, this is already in the demo the nuclear weapons uh, through the fusion beam, which is in the demo. However, I have changed the way explosions from nuclear status effects work. They usually just detonate instantly, which means you have an instant detonation of all enemies in range, which would result in a massive, very loud sound, which wasn't great. So, now they have a small delay before exploding, a random delay before exploding. So, you now get it like pop, 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 pop effect when you hit a group of enemies. So, the last weapon to talk about is the Peacemaker. It is the final uh, nuclear weapon. It basically just fires a. I mean, it says it on the screen. It fires a nuclear warhead. It doesn't actually do that much damage. <laughs> I will say that right now. Um, the very first fi uh, nuclear weapon I made was actually a massive artillery cannon that fired a massive nuke. The problem is oh, the game is just too close range for to have massive nuclear blasts. So this weapon is really meant more as a for status effects. It actually does it actually does lot less damage than the rocket launcher. This is really meant as an area of effect weapon. And you can see this when I shoot it. So any enemy that is in range of that uh, green sphere you'll get hit by like a nuclear radiation bolt or something and it does massive amounts of damage so you really want to use this against groups of enemies it's actually it's not very effective against uh, large single targets it's pretty much a waste but it's perfect against stuff like this so you so you saw all of, yeah so we saw all of those like uh, nuclear... Actually, I can show it myself by just hitting myself with it. I will need to grab some armor and health to survive. So I'll just run into it. Oh, it's actually too fast. No. All right, I'll have to build up some speed via bunny hopping to be able to... I actually don't know. It's a very slow projectile. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. Here you see the radiation hitting me. So you basically want enemies to be in the sphere of influence as long as possible. And generally, if you hit, do it right, you can hit an enemy three times. So that's 90 damage. So that's really good. Plus it applies the nuclear status effect. So if the enemy then dies, they explode. And then you can get this massive chain explosion that kills everything. So I'll just also use it on the demon enemies. Do -do -do. So yeah, I go for the far away target so they get hit. Oh, I actually missed. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let's let's not miss this time. Yeah. This is also a very fun weapon. Let's shoot it a bit more on the ground. There we go. Ah, oh, I missed again. These guys honestly have just a bit too much health. It's really best used against human enemies that have almost no health. Uh, human enemies have very little health. So they generally die by the radiation shots. These guys have just too much health. So they barely survive constantly. So maybe I should buff this weapon slightly. Yeah. 
based on the performance just now, I think I'm probably going to buff it slightly so it's, it's a bit more reliable on killing those enemies because those enemies have around 150 to 200 health points and it seems like it's just not able to kill them. So I'll probably up the damage a bit by like 10, 20 and that should be able to kill them because those small enemies should die by... because you're using 10 nuke enemies, uh, nuke, uh, nuke ammo, so you should probably be able to kill them. So yeah, I think yeah that's done. So I think that's all weapons talked about. I'm just gonna take a quick check. I don't think I forgot anything. Okay, yeah no. So yeah, that's all weapons. All of the weapons are in the game. Very good. That means uh, from this point forward, I will just be working on levels and enemies since weapons are done. So I will be continuing work on level five. Uh, and yeah, so th there's only just a forward path at this point. I although I did do another rework. I have actually, but unfortunately, I have forgotten what the rework was. I reworked some piece of code that has now been improved. I think it was weapon related because I have been working on weapons, so that is logical. But yeah, uh, continuing on uh, the game as always. Goodbye.